Good morning, Harvey. Good morning. Hey. All right. The Year of Learning by Sue and Arnie Garlick. The Memory of Malka Pearlman and Philip Mann. Yisrael David ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Beryl ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Yosef Meir ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Henya Rivka Perel Rosner bas Harav Tzvi Hirsch, in a memory of family murdered in the Holocaust, Harav Tzvi Hirsch ben Shlomo Yaakov, Sarah bat Ephraim, Yisrael David ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Ephraim ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Adia bas Harav Tzvi Hirsch, <coughs> Miriam bas Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Pesel Bas Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Shalom Ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Shlomo Yaakov Ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Shmuel Ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Cheryl Sher, her children and grandchildren, in memory of her uncle, founding member of BRS, Dr. Israel Brook, Yisrael Ben Harav Akiva, Marsha Fedebush and family, in memory of her husband, Dr. Oriel Paul Fedebush, Oriel Pinchas Ben Harav Shimon, Sharon and Fred Lisker, their family and many friends. In memory of her dear mom, Harriet Friedman, Ethel Bas Yaakov, Leslie and Gail Kaplan. In memory of their parents, Harry and Marjorie Sedell, and Irving and Pearl Kaplan. Friends of Avi Gitler, Avra Meir Ben Shimon, and Martha Gitler, Charna Bas Yeshaya. Friends of Toby Paris, Sarah Tova Bad Yisrael Dov. Friends of Malka Levy, Malka Bad Yosef. Friends of Joe Wolf, Yosef Ben Chaim. We have a month of learning by Mel and Haran Haller in memory of his brother, Yaakov Ben Avraham. Jill and Perry Meltzer, in memory of his father, David Ben Fischel Halevi, and her mother, Bela Bas Avraham. By Dove Bodlander, in memory of his wife, Udl Bas Yehuda Tzvi. Also a month of learning by Stephanie and Fred Mortman for the Rafua Shlema of her daughter, Mazal Bat Sarah Malka. Today being the, uh, what, the 30th is today, right? We have a day of learning by Barbara Hollander, in memory of her husband, Mordechai Hertz, Ben Rebbe Echiel Zedel, and that is it. May the Shemas have an aliyah, Kranka Rafia Velti Yeshiva Shem Atliyah, and the Chol Israel, a good Geben Shtiyah. Amen. Oh, man. So we were dealing with this issue of shiurim. Remember? Uh, whether the large date with the pit, without the pit, whether the large date with the pit was bigger than an egg, not, things like that. And that carried us over a bit onto uh, pay, right, Aleph, uh, 80A, okay, and uh, that being the case, we should, we're going to be continuing a bit of a ways down, okay, right, uh, where the Gemara starts, Tumat Ochlin is where we're going to pick up. That's about uh, six, six lines or so. About seven lines down from the top of the Amud. Right. Tumat Ochlin, Kabetza Minala. Right. So when we uh, discuss this issue as we go through the Gemara, okay? Um, we'll see that uh, just as uh, in our day, you can go to the store and find jumbo eggs versus regular eggs, things like that. Apparently, a egg volume may have been different uh, in their time. And that may certainly have been the, a issue particularly between Eretz Yisrael and Bavel. But let's see. So the Gemara we're picking up. Tumat ochlim kabeitza minal. And how do we know, asks the Gemara, that for something from food to become impure, it has to have the volume of the bulk of an egg. Okay? 
<clears throat> and uh, and that's to really transmit the impurity. Okay, so the Gemara continues. So Ma Rabbi Abahu, Ma Rabbi Elazar. In the name of Rabbi Elazar, Rabbi Abahu says the Amar Kra. A pasuk tells us, Mikol Haochel Asher Ye Achel. I'm going to translate that as from all which can be the food, in other words, which can be eaten, something which one will be able to eat. Okay. Namely, ochel haba mechamat ochel. That implies it's a foodstuff that comes from another foodstuff. The ezaze, and what is that? Beitza tarnagolet. It says the Gemara, that seems to be the egg, right, of a animal, of a bird. A hen. Okay, a chicken egg, right? Ve'ema gedi. Maybe I might say, however, that maybe I'm talking about a lamb, all right? A goat, a baby, uh, right? So the Gemara says, no, that won't work. Mechusar shchita. Because then... Okay, you're not, you've got to do an intermediate act, the slaughter of the animal, and therefore it's not food ready to come to be eaten from another food. Ve'ema ben pekua. Okay, says the Gemara, how about I'll give you the example of a ben pekua. Now, art, uh, uh, I'm sure Art Scroll has a note on it, a Koran, has an extensive note find, trying to explain to us that uh, this is uh, a live animal found okay, in the womb of a slaughtered animal, basically. And therefore, it has the status of the organs of the mother. And since the mother was shechted, therefore, it's as if one considers the animal the live uh, birth, if you will, uh, as if it's shechted as well. Okay, so what about that? Ta'un kriya, answers the Gemara. But that doesn't work because it requires some sort of cutting. Okay, in other words, that uh, you still have to do something to slit the throat of the animal. Okay. Right, uh, even in order to be able to eat it. Okay, so that is not an example. Ve'ema beit sat bar yochanai, says the Gemara. How about if I say it's the egg of a certain bird called the bar yochanai? Uh, I'm sure I, Art Scroll, I don't have a, an example now, has a translation or an explanation. If I remember, okay. It's a rather large bird, maybe something the size of a condor, or maybe something the size of a, what else? Um, ostrich. Ostrich, that would certainly be uh, different, okay? Right, that would, right? So that would be the question. Tafasta marubalo tafasta, says the Gemara. Okay, that if you're looking at something to grab, it's like grabbing at straws. You grab at something you really ha don't have anything to hold on to. Tafasta mu'at, tafasta. But if you take something that's smaller, okay, and therefore more appropriate, right, that's uh, edible, like a chicken egg, that seems appropriate. Ve'ema be'ata de tziporta, what about if I say something smaller, let's say a, a uh, sparrow's egg, okay? Something like that, all right? The zutar tuva, okay? That seems to perhaps be too small, right? So again, it's not appropriate. So now we come back to another explanation. Rabbi Abahu Dideyama, Rabbi Abahu himself says, Mikol ha'ochel asher ye'ochel, citing the pasuk again, ochel she'ata ochlo bevat achat. That's food that can be eaten at a single time. 
the Shi'aru Chachamim, and the sages made the following uh, guesstimate, so to speak. Ein Beit Hablia Machazik Yoter Mi Beit Sat Ternagolet. That a person's uh, uh, esophagus cannot hold more than the size approximately of a chicken egg at one time. So, given that discussion, the Gemara tells us, Amar Rabbi Elazar, okay, since we referred to a measurement, he says, Ha'ochel chelev b'zman hazeh, tzarich sheyichtov lo shior. Says Rabbi Elazar, if one winds up eating forbidden fat, he should write down or have a clear understanding of what that measurement was. Shema yavo beit din, acher, perhaps another beit din is going to come later, v'yar be'b'shiurim, and they will increase the measure. My yar be'b'shiurim asks the Gemara, what it was, does it mean when he said that they might increase the measure? E enema demechai vi korban akzayas kata. If you're going to say that maybe they would require the person to bring a korban for having eaten a, uh, let's say, a small olive amount, the hatanya, but isn't it taught elsewhere in a brighter? Asher lo te asena bishkaga vaashem. Okay, namely, right, was said with regard to guilt offering, and if any one of the common people sin through error and doing any of the things which the Lord had commanded not to be done and be guilty. Namely, Hashev Miyadiyato. Namely, this tells us, right, that the person has to be, repent, do tshuva from his awareness, from his acknowledgement that he did something wrong. May vi korban ashkegato. He must therefore then bring an offering for that uh, uh, accidental transgression. Transgression. Lo shav midiato. But if he didn't repent from out of awareness, ein me vi korban ashkegato, then he does not have to bring a uh, offering for his uh, mistake, for his unwitting action. Ella, rather, the lo mechaivi korban Ad ike kezayat gadol, namely, because we're aware of the fact that he's not obligated to bring, and therefore that chatas, unless he's eaten a large olive amount of the forbidden item. Ulamai de salik adate me ikara de mechayve korban a kezayas katan. And the Gemara then comes back and asks, basically, what about the fact that we say maybe it came into his head, right, into his mind, that originally he should be obligated to bring that korban, even if he ate a small olive amount? My yarbebeshiuri, what then is it meant when it says that maybe a court will come and increase the measure? Shema yarbe bekorbanot mechamat shiuri. Maybe they might increase the number of offerings that will be required due to that particular shiur. Namely, if he uh, was over in a small olive, he might bring one. If he was over in an amount that was a large olive, might have to bring more. Amar Rabbi Yochanan. And so Rabbi Yochanan then clarifies and says, Shiurin va'onashim halacha Moshe misinai. That the measurements and the punishments came as a halacha Moshe misinai at Sinai. Onashin asks the Gemara, Mechtav kativei. You're saying the punishments? Well, but those are clearly written down in the Torah. Ela hachi ka'amar. But rather, this is what he meant to say. Amar Rabbi Yochanan. Namely, the following. 
Shirim shel onashim halacha lemoshe misinai. Namely, the measurements of the punishments is a law that was given to Moshe at Sinai. In other words, those punishments, okay, were for, let's say, prohibited foods, okay, they had the halachas clarified and given at Sinai. Amar Rabbi Yochanan. So therefore, what happens? Tanya nami hachi. Not only that, we have a brighter. And the brighter tells us as follows. Shi'urin shel onashim halacha lemoshe misinai. That according to the brighter, right, the measures of punishments were a halacha that given to Moshe at Sinai. Acherim umrim. However, others say, beit dino shel yabetz tiknum that it was the court of Yabetz, all right? And who was Yabetz? He's listed in the book of Chronicle among one of the sons of Judah in the second Chronicles chapter 55, okay? And so uh, others have other suggestions who it is, but apparently in other words, it would uh, early, they did, and therefore, Vaktiv, says the Gemara. But isn't it written in regards to these things, Eila HaMitzvot, these are the commandments given by Hashem to Moshe at, right, at Sinai. She'ein navi rashai l'chadesh davar me'ata. That would seem to imply that no prophet is permitted to create, okay, or to reestablish under certain circumstances, something that has already been designated as Torah mandated. Ela shechachum v'chazru v'sayidum. No, says the Gemara, it's possible that the people could have forgotten them and that the prophets came back and they basically reestablished those halachas and taught them to the nation. Okay, now, since we've been dealing with uh, issues of shiur, of measurement, and we touched on the example of food, okay, whether it's an olive amount that conveys, whether it's a egg amount, whether you're high of eating something, whether it's transfer of tuma, what about liquids? And so the Gemara picks up and tells us, Hashote Melo Lugmal, one who drinks a complete or full cheekful. What does that imply? It implies that one drinking that amount would be Chayav on Yom Kippur. Amar Rabbi Yehuda, Amar Rabbi Yehuda, Amar Shmuel, in the name of Shmuel, Lo Malo Lugmav Mamash, this is not a actual, right, if you will, complete cheekful, which really would mean for us two, you know, a, a full mouth of two cheekfuls, right? That's not what we're talking about. It's enough liquid that one could put, let's say, in the side of one's mouth, and therefore it appears that you have a full cheek full. But on the other hand, we see that our Mishnah has taught us a full cheek full. I would say then that you have to say that it's light. It's a Cheekful. In other words, it's as if one's entire mouth would be full. That that means that the the shear is different for every person. Ah, exactly, Zev. Well said, Baruch Shekivanta. Okay, and that's what the Gemara may ultimately then begin to point out. Certainly, uh, the mouth cheekful for Og Melech Habashan 
for example, would be certainly different than uh, another yet person. A small bar mitzvah boy. <laughs> yeah. All right. May TV. And so we object to that. Okay. From another brighter. How much is it possible for a person to drink and be right over on Yom Kippur, be liable? Right? Beit Shammai Omrim, Revi'it. According to Beit Shammai, it's a quarter of a log. Beit Hillel Omrim, Melo Lugmav. And it's Beit Hillel who says, okay, that it's got to be two cheeks full. Rabbi Yehuda Omer, Mishum Rabbi Eliezer, and he suggests Kimelo Lugmav. Again, he's <laughs> suggesting it's a single cheekful. Rabbi Yehuda ben Batera Omer, Kedei Gemia, and he suggests instead that it's enough to swallow in a single gulp. So let's see what the Gemara tells us. Now, so we've got quite a number of shitos there that, uh, and so the Gemara has to clarify. Mi adifa mi matnitin. First of all, you cited a brighter, and you're going to say that that's preferable to a Mishnah. Da okimna kadei shiyera'e. Okay, that we're going to say that we'll establish that, okay, as the measure so that it appears like a cheekful. Hachinami, here too. Kadei sheyera'e. It's got to be enough so that it can be seen. Ihachi, if that's the case, is the Gemara. Hainu Rabbi Eliezer. That certainly could be the approach of Rabbi Eliezer, who says at least it's one cheekful. Ika benayhu. Okay. What's the difference between them? Melo lugmav dachuk. Maybe the difference then is the fact that one has a, let's say, a lot of skin on their face. And therefore, it would be very difficult to tell if the cheek was full or not. Okay? So another challenge is then raised. Okay? Mat Kifla Rav Hoshaya. So Rav Hoshaya raises a challenge to this. Im Kain, Havale Mikule Beit Shammai, Ume Chumre Beit Hillel. Right, if that's the case, and you said that uh, Beit Shammai says it only had to be quarter of a log, that would be a leniency on the part of Beit Shammai, and Beit Hillel would then suddenly be seen their view as a stringency. Amarle, okay, and so they said to him the following as we go to the next Amud. Ki itchil, when we ask, if I were to ask the question, let's say, ba'og melech habashan, itchil, I could ask it in regards to og melech habashan. Dahavule beit shamai lechumra, if that's the case, then in regards to his cheekful, a quarter log would be, you know, nothing next to him. And that would make Beit Shammai's view a stringency. Right. Okay. And so therefore, okay, as Zev pointed out, then it becomes an issue of individual status. And so Mat Kifla Rabbi Zera. Rabbi Zera challenges this and objects, Maishna Achila. So what's then the difference between the measure for a drinking versus the measure for eating? The kol chad vechad becha kotevet. That every individual has a common, I'm going to say, shiur, namely that of a volume of a large date. Right, exactly the question Zev asked. Whereas regards to drinking, are we going to say that each 
individual has their it's own no shear. separate shear? Amar le Abai. And so Abai says, Kim lahu le Rabbanan bekachot tevet debahachi miyatva daate. That the rabbis established the measure, I'm going to say, the shear of a large date, because according to this, a person is settled, their mind is settled. Well, we, we explained it, I suggested. In other words, they're satisfied, okay, that they ate something, and therefore it's not, uh, it, it, it can satisfy their immediate hunger, and therefore that's why we say it is not fulfilled the obligation of affliction on Yom Kippur, and why the person then would be chayev in that case. But seer, mehachi. But if we're going to say, if it's less than that, lo mitva, then they're not satisfied. They haven't uh, come, mind isn't settled. Bishtia, whereas in regards to drinking, bidide made vadaate. According to an individual person, his mind is settled. But his neighbor, his friend, may not be satisfied. His mind may not be settled with what somebody else drinks. Okay? Now, Rabbi Zmatkifla, Rabbi Zera. So again, Rabbi Zera challenges. The entire world, we say, everyone is obligated, right, has the minimum shiur of the large date, va'og melech habashan bekat kol tevet, and then you would even say that og melech habashan, okay, a giant of like him would have that as well, amar le abaye, and so abaye answers, kim lahol rabbanan debahachi metva da'ate, that the rabbis established based on a mount that settles a person's mind. Okay? Right? But sir mehachi, but less than that, lo made vadate. One's mind is not settled. Mihu, however, kuli alma tuva. Okay? Namely, for most of the world, I'm going to say, that's fine. That's agreeable. The Og Melech Habashan, Purta. Og Melech Habashan, it only uh, settles him a little bit. Okay? And so they chose, regarding food, a measure that was, let's say, more common to most people. Now, Rabbi Zera is still not satisfied. Okay? And challenges again. Mat kifla rabbi zera. Basar shomein. Let's take the example of fatty meat. Right? Bika kotevet. We say that seems to be an issue of, uh, of a large date. Right? Okay? However, v'lulave gifanim, if he were to eat... Uh, Grape leaves, for example, or grape shoots, but kakotevet, would you say therefore that too is in the measure of a large date? Amar le Abaye. And so Abaye responds again. Kim lahu le Rabbanam de bahachim meit vadate. The rabbis again established it based on an amount that they felt a person mind would be settled. In other words, they're somewhat satisfied enough. As a result, that's not Inui, and therefore they're oil there on Yom Kippur. But Sir Mehachi, less than that, lo mitvadate, their mind is not settled. Ma mehu, nevertheless, basar shomen tuva. Okay, 
with regards to fat meat, okay? And say that's the case, that's great. Lulave gifanim purta. But uh, grape leaves, grape uh, shoots, that's only somewhat satisfied. And therefore that may still be uh, satisfy inui, the requirement on Yom Kippur. Now, a new objection. Matkif la Rava. Rava challenges, and he says the following. Kezayit v'chdei achilat pras. Okay, the measure usually is eating an olive amount, olive volume, in the time to eat a half loaf. And therefore, are we saying that it's eating this large date in the time to eat half a loaf? And Marley Abaye. And so again, Abaye attempts to answer. Gives the same answer. The rabbis established it on a situation. Okay, that a person's mind was settled, namely that they had enough to eat and that therefore that's not inui. Bitfei mehachi. But if we're talking about more than that, lo mitva midate. Right? In that case, right? What's the situation? Right? There are all different kinds of bread. Right. Some take longer to eat than others. Okay. Well, that could be, right? But what happened is the question of if it's a longer time, right? So, again, Rava Matkifla. Matkifla Rava. Again, Bitkotevin. <clears throat> when we're talking about this large date measure, Bichde Achilat Pras, okay? In terms of within the time to eat a half loaf, chazi plus, bechde achilat plus. Okay, well, can we say in this case that eating a half loaf, okay, within the time normally considered to eat a half loaf? Okay, do most people really are they able to eat? As Steve points out, maybe it depends on the kind of bread. Okay. All right. Or well, maybe it depends on other things. Okay. Namely, uh, um, the K is the food. Okay. Uh, example that we might take. Uh, let's say uh, uh, if somebody eats something that's uh, impure. Okay. Can we say then that that measure <clears throat> is also based on a time frame? Okay. That measure is based simply on, a, on a, an amount. It's not based on both an, both an amount and a time frame. Okay. So, Amar le Rav Papa. This is Rav Papa. Hanach letumat Put aside. This is the issue of, uh, of tumor, okay? Because in a sense, that is uh, a, a separate topic. The love, the oraita. Because in many cases, that's not a Torah mandated issue. That's a rabbinic issue that the rabbis established. And so Rav uh, Papa responds, right? Did Rav Papa really say that kind of a statement? That it's a rabbinic law, not a Torah law? But isn't we, don't we have a puzzle that tells us that clearly the Torah spells out you shall not make yourselves detestable with any kind of creeping thing, neither shall you make yourself impure with them, that you should be there, be impure in that manner. Okay. 
ואמר רב פאפה. And therefore רב פאפה says, מכאן שתועת גבייה דאורייט. That here we see that the tumor, okay, of from foodstuffs is a Torah mandated law. I mean, the Rabbanan, however, from the rabbis, ukra esmachta ba'alma. But really, it was a law that the rabbis established and used that pasuk as a support, as a, as a hook to hang it up. Okay. Now, since we've talked about a shear for drinking, and we've talked about a shear for food, and we're still dealing with the issue of how much food and of what kinds do we say clearly that they would make one rival on Yom Kippur, we can ask the following question, as we're going to do so in a moment in citing our Mishnah, the following. Kol ha'ochalim, all kinds of food, okay? What if one were to eat only, let's say, a half an olive of X and a half of olive of Y? You might argue, hey, I didn't eat, one didn't eat the required shiur to be over on eating on Yom Kippur, right? Is it mistarif? Okay, so that's the, what we're going to see. Kol ha'ochlin amara papa says, achal umtsa umilcha. Let's say he ate meat, and then he also ate something else, uh, something salted. Mitztarif, they join together. In other words, they can be such that together they would equal that large day. Va'afal gav, the lav achilahi. And even though you might argue that uh, by his having put salt, okay, salt is not a real food, only a spice. How can you say that? Kevan da'achle inche. Since purple people, however, do eat salt at times, right, even by itself, mitztarfi, they therefore join. And so Reish Lakish raises the following. Let's take another example, says Reish Lakish. Sphere, right? We said that's uh, brine, usually, right? A liquid. And that brine, okay? And it's something that's on a vegetable. Mitztareif lekakotevet biyom hakipuri that can join together with other items, okay, to make one over on prohibition of eating on Yom Kippur. Pshita, isn't that obvious, says the Gemara? Mahu detema, what are you trying to tell us? Mashkehu, namely that that's a liquid. Kamashmu, and therefore it comes to teach us. Ko, achshure uchla, Uchlahu, namely anything, okay, that uh, is a, like a liquid, but it still prepares food, okay? Remember we said these liquids were such seven liquids, uh, uh, water, honey, blood, a uh, uh, few others, right? That can transfer tuma. That being the case, it's as if they are like food. And therefore, if they're considered food, they can be mitztare. They can join. Now, further piece, since we've cited Reish Lakish, he says another example, another statement. Amar Reish Lakish, the Reish Lakish, ha'ochel achila gasan biyom hakipurim pator. One who eats an excessive amount, okay, or in an excessive manner, right, is exempt, okay? In other words, um, 
What, what example can I give that, uh, all right. He eats something and uh, he gags on it or vomits it, whatever, something, okay? Why is he patur according to Reish Lakish? My tama, why? Because the Pasuk said, asher lo to une, okay? Right, because the Pasuk basically was saying, right, that, uh, okay, that, that clearly, okay, the question of the soul shall not be afflicted. That person will be punished, will be getting colored, okay? And therefore, ktiv prat lemazik. And therefore, it's written to tell us that a person who eats in a manner that is detrimental to their welfare, that harms him, therefore, would not be held chayev for eating on Yom Kippur, according to Reish Lakish. Amar Rabbi Yirmiya, Amar Reish Lakish. And now Rabbi Yirmiya says in the name of Reish Lakish, are you implying from that the following? Zar she'achal truma achila gasa, that a non-Kohen who ate truma in a manner of achila gasa, whether we say that it was excessive or inappropriate manner, uh, detrimental manner, mishalem at the karen, the no mishalem at the chomish, that all he would have to pay as his punishment is the uh, uh, principal amount, and he wouldn't have to pay the increase, right, the additional fit, because the Pasuk says, keep your chal. If a man eats, prat lamazik. Maybe I would use the same example and say, with the exception, if it's going to cause him uh, detriment, to hurt. Amar Rabbi Yirmiya, Amar Rabbi Yochanan. So Rabbi Yirmiya then says, in the name of Rabbi Yochanan, Zar, as we go over a little bit, Shekoseth, Soorim shall truma. Let's say that there's a non kohen, right? And he chews the, uh, okay, right? The uh, barley corn, right? On pieces of barley, and they happen to be truma. Mishalei meta keren, ve'eno mishalei meta chomash. Okay, would have to pay. Hey, uh, okay, and this barley hasn't been, uh, you know, it's the kernels he's chewing on, not the ground barley, not the prepared barley, things like that, okay, that he would pay the principal and not the fifth. When it says, ki yochal, if he eats it, prat the mazik, with the exception of if he eating this uncooked, unpounded, unprepared ground barley, if it causes him harm, okay, he shouldn't be held responsible, maybe, in that case, to pay the fit. Now to finish up, Amar Rav Shizvi, Amar Rabbi Yochanan. Now Shizvi in the name of Rabbi Yochanan, Zar Shabala Shizafim Shal Truma. Let's say that a non kohen who swallowed plums that were truma fruit, right? The hekian, and then he mm -hmm. also spit them out, okay? The achlan acher, okay? And then they were eaten by somebody else, mm -hmm. right? Sounds gross. Kind of gross. Yeah. Right? Anyway. Yummy. Rishon Mishalem at Karen Vachomish. The first one, says Rav Shizmi, has to pay both as their punishment, the principal amount and the fifth. Shani Ein Mishalem Eladme Etzim 
the Rishon Bilvan. And the second person, all they have to pay is the amount of using those, let's call it, uh, say he didn't eat it, but he took it, all right? The, uh, the uh, prunes or the plums and pits and things like that. <coughs> and he took it to use it uh, for some Sorry. other purpose. Then he would have to pay the equivalent of paying firewood to the person, okay? To the original person. Because all those, let's say, uh, uh, plums, whatever, all they're good for is to use as fuel, okay? And as a result, <clears throat> that's why he would pay less than the other person, okay? So we're going to stop there for today. Ooh. Pick up the Gemara tomorrow some more when we deal again further with uh, eating and uh, what's joining and join and the things. And even the ne next mission is going to touch on the topic of, of uh, this issue of eating things. Do they combine? Don't they combine? Okay. Um, you know, things of that nature. And uh, also, do we really think of certain items as a real foodstuff? Okay. For example, uh, let's take uh, pickling spices in, uh, okay. Would you, would one normally drink uh, a container of uh, brine. Brine, exactly. Okay, so we'll pick that up, and that's going to what's going to continue for quite a bit. I was going to bring that up about the person that ate it and and spit it out, and so is that really considered food stuff? But it's me. It's me use. It, it, true, and therefore maybe that's why it's not considered a real foodstuff since it's only wor worthy of being used for fuel. Fuel, right. One second. Tomorrow's Gemara is a little bit longer. Right? Okay? So we'll see what we can do. Okay. Right, Thank you very much.